Cool. All right, let's get started. We're, uh, I think we've got a couple folks joining us today. A couple more should be should be dropping in for some some holiday cheer. But um, this one's a, 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 a timeless classic for the holidays. Uh, SharePoint is slow, right? So most common user complaint, lament, etc. And a lot of times, not the kind you get tickets about, right? Because people just complain about it. They know nothing's going to happen and the diagnosing is going to take too long. So this is a, a one that I think we're really uniquely um, qualified to talk about because there's all these different angles to it. There's things developers can do to make it faster. There's things we as site builders can do and information architects. Um, there's things that there's certainly things that IT pros can do. So we're all going to have kind of points of view and I think different topics here that are near and dear to our hearts. So this is today's topic. We'd, we'd love to hear from you some of your uh, your questions and your experience from the trenches on this as well. So Emily, I think, you know, SharePoint is slow is is fine to say, but let's talk about what slow means and what slow does to, to users. Absolutely. So we're going to start off with Nielsen's law of internet bandwidth, which is just calling out that a high end user's connection speed grows by 50% per year. We've seen a lot of increase in bandwidth over time and therefore our solutions are now taking up that space of that bandwidth. Bandwidth is one of the most two important elements together with screen quality. So when we're creating these web designs, we need to make sure that we're catering to the masses and aim at the optimal usability over a wide range of available internet speeds. So while us as Simpraxians or IT pros might be on that higher end of internet bandwidth, you do need to remember that majority of people are choosing that middle tier option from their internet service providers. So whatever you build needs to be supported by that speed. So what do we consider slow? Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so for our response times, if we take a peek at the different lengths, 0.1 second feels pretty instantaneous. This is like when you're clicking on your mobile phone and on an app. One second, you can sense a delay so you know that the computer is doing something, but and you're waiting for that outcome. So that's usually what we're seeing on out of the box SharePoint sites for let's say our global navigation. Then when we get up to around 10 seconds and above, this is where the users are really at the mercy of their computer and wishing it was faster, but they will tolerate it. You'll read a lot about this online as like decreasing conversion rates. So think of your intranet internally. You're losing people who are trying to complete those top tasks. That's your conversion that you are losing. A lot of our end users are complaining about this, you know, longer wait time. So how does that actually impact them? Because on a surface level, it just sounds like impatience. So Erickson did a couple of studies and shows that slow speeds actually increase stress. So a six, sec six second delay to video streaming caused stress levels to increase by 30%, which is a lot. Putting that into context, the stress level of waiting for that video to load is equivalent with a match test or watch math test or watching a horror movie alone. And I don't know about you, I absolutely don't watch horror movies alone. So it's actually impacting your end users a ton. So we might wanna have a couple different considerations for prioritizing speed. I think this one's over to you, Mark. Okay, um, I, I think one of the mistakes people make is that they don't think about this until there's a problem. And so, you know, your users don't know what to expect because you've never discussed it. So one of the things that you ought to be doing before you roll out or as you make a big change is to agree on some metrics. You know, we, we're shooting for a four second response time on, on pages on the internet, or we're, we're hoping that when you go to fill out your, your expense report, it doesn't take any longer than 10 minutes for the process, not necessarily for the pages. So coming up with some sort of metrics before you're rolling things out is very important. That That's often talked about as a service level agreement. <clears throat> um, but, <clears throat> excuse me, but if you have some sort of conversation around it, then at least you're setting the stage for what people can reasonably expect. If you're going from SharePoint Online, for example, to SharePoint in the cloud, the response times will be different in different ways. And so you'll want to 
make sure that people are understanding any change as well and, and how they should think about those metrics. You should also be thinking about those metrics over time. The, you know, things don't stay the same. Like, like Emily showed in, in that early slide, you know, our bandwidth um, uh, availability has been going up, but, but, uh, and, but our applications can sometimes sort of use it all up. So you want to think about what's reasonable at any given time. So for instance, if you're in a headquarters building and you add some huge new bandwidth pipe, then you shouldn't be using the old metrics. You should obviously have uh, faster metrics to, to discuss. Not all pages should adhere to the same metrics. Some capabilities are just resource intensive and they may take longer. Um, some things like your homepage on your internet, you want to be very consistent and, and maybe one of the fastest pages that you have available to your user base. So you might want to think about different tiers of metrics or different, different service level agreements, depending on what people are doing. Things that people use a lot matter a lot more than people use infrequently. And this happens a lot with our clients. You know, somebody will come zooming into a meeting and, oh, the CFO can't get the thing to work on his iPad. Well, if the CFO is doing that thing on his iPad once a month, yeah, he's the CFO. And yeah, it's important. But that's not the same thing as, uh, you know, bad performance on the homepage when everybody's going there every morning to find out what the news is inside the company. So you need to come up with some sort of balance about how to think about that. And then anything you're using with multimedia is going to slow down your pages. Big images, uh, videos, things like that may, may slow down your pages. So you want to make sure that you're using those media effects to, to get some points across, to be sure that it's helping people understand the content that you're putting in front of them and not just taking up bandwidth. And on to the next slide with Todd. So most of it, when we were putting this together, we, were, we all had great ideas on what parts of SharePoint to talk about. Uh, but then as, as we started talking about it, we kind of came to the conclusion that a lot of us and a lot of the people we support right now are working from home. And so I was able to talk them into you know giving a slide on some of that work from home stuff. And, and part of it was because even within the last you know week or so, I'd had some of these discussions with coworkers and friends and all that kind of stuff. So SharePoint might be slow because everything is slow for your users. And so this is kind of from the context of them calling the help desk or them calling whatever and saying, hey, SharePoint's slow. Here are some things for you to figure out if it's SharePoint that's slow or if it's everything that's slow. Uh, first off, wired internet connections for them at home will always be faster. Uh, my machine here that I work on, I, I spent money, had wire run so that my connection this machine to the internet is wired because it's faster. Anything that I care about speed wise, I try to run a wire to. It's faster, it's always also easier. Like you can just plug it in and if all the lights light up, it probably works with wireless, it's the keys and the distance and all that. So to make SharePoint and everything else faster, use a wire whenever possible. Not always possible, I get that, but it's also a good troubleshooting thing. So if your people say, hey, SharePoint's slow, and they, you say, hey, do you have a wire? They say, no, I can't, You know, it has to be wireless. If they have a wire just to try it, if that makes the problem go away, you know the problem's the wireless and it's not internet, or it's not uh, SharePoint. Um, when you're talking about wireless internet, try to have the access point you know, in the middle of your area, if you can, a lot of folks don't even think about it. So one of the stories I was telling uh, the Sopraxis folks is when this whole work from home thing happened, one of my neighbors approached me because everybody in the neighborhood knows I'm a big nerd. And, and she was like, hey, you know, we're all working from home now and the internet's really slow. Do we have to buy more, whatever? And in talking to her, I found out that she was using uh, the DSL modems wireless that, that they had been using and had been fine. And because that wire came in on the side of the house, the DSL modem and the wireless was on the edge of the house, you know, so there's part. And for the, in their case, it just happened to be in a closet. So she had this wireless access point in the corner of the house in a closet. Uh, and, you know, oddly enough, the wireless didn't work very well. So the, the first thing that I had her do was uh, just pull it out and set it in the middle of the room. So it happened to be a closet in their bedroom. And I'm like, during the day while you're working and the kids are doing school, can you just roll it out, give it some sunshine, let some air, you know, get it out there. And that made all the difference for them. Uh, so moving that access point, if it's separate from your modem, uh, some are, some aren't, that gives you some stuff. And line of sight is good too, uh, because the wireless stuff, as we move up in speed, we also have to use different frequencies. So you'll see like the 2.4 gigahertz wireless and the 
five gigahertz wireless. Uh, the five gig is faster, but it also gets blocked by walls and even people who are just big sacks of water. Um, so if you can get line of sight between your computer and your mode or in your wireless thing, that will uh, that will help too. Um, one of the things to have people do if they're complaining that SharePoint is slow is have them run one of the many myriads of internet speed tests on their machine. Uh, so the one that I like, if you go to Bing, that's the Google for Microsoft. Uh, if you go to Bing and search for speed test, it'll give you a bunch of the speed test sites. But if you're in the US, there is a speed test app built right into the page. So I just do that uh, and have them test that. If their internet's slow, everything's gonna be slow. Uh, one thing I was talking to Mike about here a week or so ago, he was seeing different internet uh, uh, performance between his phone and his PC, and his phone was getting better internet access. And so we figured out that his phone had a five gigahertz a wireless chip in it. His computer had a 2.4 gigahertz chip in it. That was the difference. Uh, so he wasn't really having performance problems, but he just wanted to understand the difference between them. But if that was the case, then we could maybe have gotten a different network card or something. Uh, and then, you know, the internet that we bought a year ago, two years ago or whatever, uh, is being used very differently than the internet is today. So maybe you do need more bandwidth. Uh, for my neighbors across the street, they're outdoorsy folks. They spend a lot of time outside, uh, calluses on their hands, however that happens. Uh, but then when we couldn't do those things, they're using their internet very differently. Uh, and so they had gotten low, low internet before because they just didn't spend a lot of time on the internet. So maybe, you know, look at that, maybe get more bandwidth. Take advantage of that 50% uh, you're supposed to get this year, according to Emily. Before we go to the, the next slide, can we, uh, there's a couple questions that are outstanding out there. <clears throat> um, Josh's question about, Noticing that the gear icon loads about five seconds after everything else. You want to talk about that? Yeah, uh, I, I can take that one. So yeah, as somebody who goes into SharePoint less to do work and more to break things and fiddle with it, Josh, I noticed that gear uh, loading last every single time I go into SharePoint. I would say your experience with it coming five uh, seconds uh, at the end is enviable. I, it feels like it's about 27 when I do that. Uh, yeah, that's that's by design. And you know, Mark talked a little bit about that in the previous one. When Microsoft's designing that page to load, they're doing the things that people use a lot first, and then the thing that doesn't happen very often, uh, they're making that load last. And so for the average of people going to the, the SharePoint page, they're not going there to go to that gear. That's just folks like you and I. And so Microsoft has chosen to make that load last. And we heard a lot of frustration from, from a client where the search box at the top of the uh, sweep bar was loading last and with some lag to it. It's like that's if there's people in your team on your environment who are navigating primarily via search, that's going to be really frustrating. But we have very little control over that. That's Microsoft deciding on the order in which things load on the page, correct? That's yep. and th and that's something where they actually made an adjustment when they were first rolling out that Microsoft search bar at the top. They got a lot of that feedback. And if you Good. if you do some refreshes on a page now, I just was doing it to make sure I was telling the truth. You'll see that it it pops up pretty fast now. In fact, okay. it often pops up faster than the con the main content of the page. So user voice is important in all of this because if if you're if your large base of users is seeing something slow that you can attribute to a Microsoft thing, you can ask them to fix that. Yep. All right. Yeah. Let's skip to the next and we'll talk about now now we're down to specific pages. So let's let's drill into this a little bit if we can. Nobody's name is on this one, but since my lips flap very fast, um, I think I think one of the, the problems that people often have is that they just say the page is slow and then nobody quite knows what to do with that. And the, the key here is to isolate the part of the page that actually is slow. We may have, you know, 15, 20 web parts on a page, especially in the old days, we would we, we would often have a lot of custom stuff. And people would say, well, we have to fix the whole page. Well, it's not usually the page that's the problem. It's usually pieces of the page. So you want to um, experiment with either a copy of that page or, you know, in edit mode. And and remove some web parts, add some web parts. Figure out figure out what is actually causing the slowness. Um, often cases, it's some it's some custom code that's been deployed, like a custom extension that does some snazzy navigation or something that that uh, you know adds a, a snazzy footer. Um, and if that's on every single page, then that's going to slow all of your pages down. So just make sure you, you you try and isolate what it is that's causing the problem as opposed to the user perception of what's causing the problem. The gear is a great example. 
yeah, that gear feels like it takes forever to load that image if you're an end, end user. But that's not it at all. It's a cognizant decision that Microsoft has made not to have that show up because most people don't use it first. Um, so when you once you've got that that uh, that actually slow part figured out, sometimes it's your content too. Um, you have to figure out well, how am I going to solve that? And just taking it away is not always the answer, right? It may be something that really really matters. So you have to come up with wh whatever your remediation plan is, either for uh, that specific piece of content, that web part that you've that you've uh, built yourself, the the extensions you may have built for yourself. Um, lots of times, it's things like, um, and actually, I'm I, I'm probably stepping across the the line here. The developer side of things will be Julie and Derek, but you know, make sure that you're you're looking at the exact thing that is causing the problem, and you're coming up a way, with a way to make that piece of the page work better. Yeah, and I don't remember if it's this slide or another one, so I apologize if I'm stealing somebody's thunder. Uh, back in the on-prem days, um, when to, to Mark's point about you know figuring out what the problem is, if somebody was saying SharePoint was slow, you know obviously the whole thing's not slow. So I would make a copy, or I would have a pristine uh, team side or publishing side or whatever, and I would see if that loaded slowly. And if that loaded slowly, then I know it's a server side thing. It's a systemic thing. But if a regular team site loads quickly, but this other one loads slowly, then I know it's something on that page. <laughs> to Mark's point, there's less of that now in SharePoint Online, but it's still not a bad idea to have just a regular site sitting somewhere that doesn't have anything on it. If that shows up quickly, then you know for sure it's something on the page. That's a great idea, Todd. And we'll, I think we'll talk a little bit more about some of the diagnostic tools, right? For me as a non-developer, yeah, yeah. if something's loading slow, what can I look at in the console or the diagnostic tools to at least give the developers a head start if they'll, you know, if they're if they're going to work on it? It's yeah. a it's always a good idea to look up empirical testing on Wikipedia every once in a while. <clears throat> Make sure that you're isolating things down to to find what actually is the problem as opposed to just sort of randomly changing stuff, which seems to be a lot of common behavior. Yeah. And Mark's going to spell empirical in the chat room for us. So let's can Google that. <clears throat> All right, Todd, let's take us through some network related stuff. Me again. Um, so this is uh, ner nerdy IT stuff. Um, if you have a, a big crowd, so imagine, so, so this works for work from home stuff, but also if you have many offices, uh, is it everybody that's seeing slowness? Uh, because if you've got different buildings, you know, remember those magical days when we all worked in offices, it might be just the user in the Boston office has experienced slowness, but the people in the Ames office, they have better internet, so they're not seeing it. So that tells you, again, it's not SharePoint that tells you it's something thing uh, at that office and then look for commonality is it always people that go to the set of sites that have this accounting thing on it or is it always people in Massachusetts or, or, or whatever uh, trying to figure that out will help you figure out if it is SharePoint or if it's uh, something else the speed test tools help with that uh, we had one customer that had a bunch of offices all over the world and had various degrees of, of speed problems and so one of the things that I did is I had a list of uh, locations and a VM at each machine, and multiple times a day, I would log into each of these VMs at different offices all over the world and run speed tests, and we threw it in a spreadsheet and just started figuring out. And sure enough, it was some offices in one country, and we figured out that the way their internet access was, it was kind of making an extra loop in a couple of spots. That's why everything seemed slow to them. Wasn't, uh, wasn't SharePoint at all. Uh, so that um, so those are, are pretty pretty handy tools because you can really get wrapped around the axle of it being something happening in SharePoint, especially if you've been adding things. It's easy to think about that. Um, and the final thing that I kind of wanted to mention is something I haven't done a lot with, but felt important to, to mention was Express Route is an, a thing that Microsoft has. Microsoft has a lot of they bought up a lot of dark fiber from back in the the dot com. Uh, days. So once you get to a certain point of the internet, then you just end up on Microsoft's dark internet. But you can you can do that one step further. You can get a dedicated line from your office or your data center or whatever directly to Microsoft. It's called Express Route. Uh, so obviously that's much faster. Uh, I don't know exactly how you qualify for that. That's not just something I can't just call uh, you know Satya up and, and order some Express Route. Uh, but if you have a big business and you've got these offices that need to have good access to Office 365 and Azure, Express Route is uh, something to, to check out. And Todd, lucky you, uh, you get to talk some more. 
<laughs> see, yeah. So here's just kind of a list of, of other things that we've seen that have caused this problem. Um, we have another customer who has a, an internal application that requires IE. And so their users, that, especially the ones that use that application, end up spending a lot of the day in IE. And then they go to Office 365 and they're like, this thing stinks. It's horrible. Well, you know, it's not Office 365 that stinks. It's your browser that stinks. So make sure that if you have somebody complaining about uh, performance issues that they are actually using a modern version of, of uh, Edge or Chrome or something like that. Another thing is an admin is, is the platform down. So we see it once in a while. Google had a big outage here a couple days ago. If people are complaining about things being slow, go to the message center in the admin site and see is something down that might be uh, causing the problem. I had this whole header of network wonkiness. Uh, is everything slow? Routing weirdness just, and it's funny, just last night, I had a website that I normally go to that I couldn't get to. And so uh, being a network guy, I went out, there's a bunch of sites that let you search if a site is down. I went there, the site was not down. Uh, went to it on my phone, couldn't get to it, turned the, net, the wireless off, so I was going through my phone network, I could get to it. Did a trace route, and for whatever reason, my ISP just couldn't get to that, that web posting place. Uh, but it looked like that, that site was down. Uh, so, so check those things. It's not always uh, Office 365. VPNs, proxies, other shenanigans. That was the problem with our one customer where everybody inside of one country had problems. There was a, a proxy in place somewhere, and we, I don't remember if we were able to find a way around it, uh, but it was, at least kept us from trying to find other problems. Uh, and so you know, tools like Traceroute, things like that really help. Um, Microsoft has a tool, and it's that network diag tool directly above the, the running yak there, that will do a diag to Office 365. So it will measure latency and jitter and bandwidth and all that kind of thing, make sure all the ports are open, things like that. Uh, and that's a good one to run if you think you're having any problems getting to, to uh, Microsoft 365. Uh, some other stuff I put in here were other tools that I've used. Uh, inside of the web browser, you can hit F12, I think, and that gets you the developer tools. I don't understand anything in that page whatsoever, but that's a good way. You know, Emily talked earlier about how long the page loads. When somebody calls and says SharePoint slow, what does that mean? If you open up the developer pane, you can refresh the page and it'll tell you exactly how long that page took to load. Six seconds, four seconds, 12 seconds, whatever. Free built in, that's an easy one to use. Um, that and Fiddler. Fiddler tool is a free tool from Telerik now, I think, that will let you look at the page. We talked earlier about having big media files, things like that. Tools like the developer tool or Fiddler will give you like a waterfall and you can see there's a big chunk in the middle where that big image downloaded. That's why SharePoint's slow, uh, so grab that. Uh, I already talked about ping and traceroute, the network diag tool. I think I've hopefully given some time. There's some developer tools that they're gonna talk about. Uh, but these are just kind of tools to have in your, your tool chest to troubleshoot some of these things because troubleshoot an online service, like you can't look at the CPU and the memory. We admins have a tough time finding the tools to troubleshoot this. So just kind of having these listed to help you out uh, when it comes up. So Mark, I think Mark and, and Emily, from a site owner perspective, like I'm not a dev, I'm not an IT pro. What are some of the things I should be aware of to help performance? Right. So, I mean, sometimes it's not the infrastructure. It's not the product itself, it's what you've put in the page that's the problem. And um, th these are just some examples of some things that you want to watch out for. So large images are always a problem. If you have some image that's got, you know, it's 7,000 pixels square and you're really showing it in something like this, there's just no need for that. So you want to make sure, especially again on a home page or a page that people are hitting all the time, that you tune your images to be the right size. Um, I think in, in SharePoint where you, where you can actually now drag, sort of drag the size of the of the image, that's just the display itself. That doesn't change the size of the underlying image. So you still need to think about that. Too many web parts. Used to really be a problem in the old days. I think it could still be a problem in certain circumstances. So for instance, if you've got 15 quick links, you would want to use one quick link web part instead of 15 quick link web parts with one quick link in each one. Um, you'd be surprised what kinds of things we see people doing like that, where it's, you're just adding unnecessary unnecessary page complexity and not using the, the tools that you have at your disposal in an optimal way. Um, when you're using the file viewer, you might, you might have a, a file that is ginormous or has a lot of very um, 
very uh, high resolution stuff in it. So that might be something that could be making that page low, load slowly. Another thing that, that people don't always realize is when you have a really long page, meaning a lot of content, it's just going to take longer, right? So lots of times you want to sort of divide your content up into some more bite-sized chunks, you know, maybe five pages, five you know, sort of medium sized pages makes a lot more sense than one ginormously long page. It certainly will be easier to read and easier to consume. And you can also send people to uh, different pages based on what it is they're trying to to solve. So it's all part of that writing for the web rubric, but but also can have a big, uh, a big effect on performance. Document libraries and list views that have too many columns. Again, bigger problem in the old days, but still potentially a problem now. Most of it's uh, most of the time when you're looking at a list or a library, it's lazy loading the items in your view. But if your default view is showing every one of your 50 columns in a list, it's just going to be a little bit slower than if you're showing the five columns that people actually need to see and they go to a different view to see different things. So something to think about. It's all most of these under you know the underlying messages make sure that you're showing people things that actually make them productive or make them able to make better decisions and believe it or not that will be less content and therefore you will have less less of a problem with performance and then if you're going to talk to you know if, if i'm going to go yell at todd about the bandwidth in our in my office or you know the server's slow todd um don't just say that you know don't don't <laughs> say sharepoint's slow try and bring some data you know, I've I've loaded this page 10 times and each time it's somewhere between four and six seconds. That's something that Todd can do something with. If I just complain and, you know, sort of start in an adversarial way, it's a, mo a lot harder for Todd to fix the problem. So uh, there's a there's a, a, a page soft has that gives some recommended image sizes, which can help. A, make your pages look better, but B, um, with, with the performance stuff. There are some third-party uh, uh, analytics tools like Tigraph that can help um, with your um, page load times, as well as some of the tools that Microsoft is coming out with that use the SharePoint site performance page article actually points to the same tool set that's on one of the other slides that's coming up but it's written more from a site owner perspective. So you can actually pull up a little widget that, that tells you what parts of your page are slow and what to do about it. You know, this image is over 300K, consider replacing it. That's pretty helpful. And then speedtest.net is, uh, again, just, just to, to, to understand, especially since we're all working from home, is the problem Microsoft 365 or is there something going on inside my you know, workspace, and maybe you're just restarting that router might be a way to uh, fix things. And on to Derek and Julie to talk about developer tools so and tricks. Before before we do, can I ask, did we cover the videos okay in the chat? Like a couple of people had questions about videos and optimizing video for page load. I mean, generally okay speaking, yeah, generally speaking, when you're using the embed or the YouTube, um, uh, web parts, your 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 user sees that static image when the page loads. If you had a lot of them on the page and they were, uh, God forbid, ever set to autoplay, then that can get pretty hairy. And, yeah, Todd seems to have strong opinions about that. Yeah. I would say. <laughs> Am I wrong? Does anybody disagree with that? Well, some praxis as a matter of policy does not advocate for violence against our users. <laughs> Fair Put enough. it out there. All right, so devs, what do you have for us? In the 60 seconds we have <laughs> we have remaining, um, you know, I would just say be be cautious of the customizations that you're putting on. If you're developing them, make sure that they're developed using best practices. Um, one of the sources that we see for slowness with some of our customers and clients is poorly executed customizations um, that could be for branding that could be an app customizer that's set to run and load on every page that you know makes a whole bunch of calls to to the server um, you know there, it's it's all very it's easy to write code um, it's really easy to write bad code so make sure that you're making sure that the the customizations you're putting on your site are thoroughly vetted and adhere to best practices um, you know on that front of 
you know, arming you as a site owner with information, you know, looking at the developer tools and, you know, if it's, if the console is filled with red, um, now that said, SharePoint and Office 365 do spit out quite a few errors on their own. Um, but if you have customizations and you see a whole lot of red in the console, that could be something that, you know, er things are timing out. Um, and then your de your developers or your network people can start to dial that back and, and trace that back. I think the only thing I might add is that last bullet point about too much complex functionality. Um, on the home page or on every page. So if you're uh, building application customizers that are going to load on every page in your internet, you want to be super thoughtful about what it is that that thing is going to do um, and how big that solution is going to be because it's certainly going to add significant overhead to the page performance. And so you need to decide very cognizantly how much you really need to have versus how much uh, speed you're willing to give up because the SharePoint page by itself uh, Microsoft is only targeting a four to six second page load time. And so if your customization's adding, you know, a second or two, you're now looking at six to eight second page loads times, and that's going to get into that area where people are going to be frustrated. Uh, regarding the page diagnostics tool, does it do we need to tell folks that that's a Chrome extension? You can load it, it sits right in your browser from any SharePoint page. You can light that up and it'll give you information about the different components that as they're loading on the page and information about that. Is that a useful tool for, for folks that we just want to make sure they're aware of that? It can be. It's quite technical. Uh, yeah. this, um, it, it tries not to be, but inter being able to interpret the results it's giving you and what to do with them other than sometimes it tells you you have large images on the page other than that piece of data the rest of it is tends to be technical so you might need you know a todd admin type or a developer to help you figure out what it means but you certainly can use it to help bring information when you're saying there's a problem back to mark's point about don't just say it's broken you know give me as much detail as you can about what you're seeing and that can help make the solution faster. All right. In the interest of uh, in the interest of time, I'll skip to the last page. We've got links to the, some of the tools that we talked about: the network diagnostic tool, the page diagnostic tool, um, the, the office support content. We will not do a session in two weeks, but in four weeks, Wednesday, January thirteenth, we're going to talk about. Um, the silver linings from 2020, our favorite things that got released, things we're most excited about in 2021. So please bring ideas as always to that. Use the uh, use the link that you see at the bottom right or engage with us via social media in, in any sort of way. Um, super, super active there. Did I miss anything, folks? Anything that anybody else wants to wrap with? No. no. That's awesome. That's well. It. Thank you, everybody, for the time and, and the effort that went into this. We know there's a lot more content we could have done on this topic, but we wanted to give you enough to get started and spur the discussion. So feel free to keep it going in the chat uh, using the uh, at Simpraxis C Twitter handle or the Ask Simpraxis hashtag. And if we don't talk sooner, have a, have a lovely holiday. Stay safe. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.